words that I am very proud to be one of you, one of 1.2 million Rotarians around the world. And my presentation today will be about the RCF or the Rotary Children's Fund, known, formerly known as the Rotary Children's Fund, and its international cultural exchange program called Golden Gates. I will tell you all about that. But in the beginning of my presentation, I want you to be clear that there's a great youth exchange program that Rotary leads, very successful program. I'm sure you're familiar with that. 40,000 students study someplace abroad with the Rotary supervision. We're not part of that. It's different. Rotary had great GSE program. And I've been a part of this program and uh, worked and greet the groups in our district 7710 from Belgium, from France, from Colombia, Argentina. Great program, but we're not part of that either. Rotary has great French friendship exchange program. And I've been a part of this program right before pandemic started, had a great time in Croatia, had a, such a great experience, came back and joined the friendship uh, committee in our district. I want to <clears throat> go on these trips and have the friendship with the different countries. Excellent program. Would recommend anybody to get involved. We're not part of that either. We're just one of the organizations that started by the Rotary Club or the Rotarians, because I truly believe the power of Rotary is each one of us with experience and success behind us. Because when we Rotarians come up with a great idea that make difference and we Rotarians support it, it can be successful. One of the greatest success stories is the Polio Plus program that started some way uh, this way as well. So the program and organization that I'm going to speak about will be about the organization that was inspired by Rotarians, put together and funded by Rotarians and run by us, by Rotarians. If you would allow me, since I didn't hear it yet, I would like to relate my program to the four-way test. I'm sure everybody knows it by heart. I just wanted to make sure how important that fifth thing for this particular club. I hope it is important because if we have fun by doing good things, we can do more of that. Let me start. Is this the truth? The organization, the program, the presentation that I'm going to present to you. To be able to better understand what I will try to say, you need to know a little bit about myself because I was the one who started this program back in the 90s. I was born right there in the Kazakhstan, in the south of the Soviet Union. We lived and I was raised during the Soviet Union time. I think we were happy. We lived in the international community. I was raised there by 15. At 15, I left my home, went to different country, 3,000 kilometers away, went through the music school, music college, music conservatory, joined very famous company, theater group, and traveled around quite a few different countries when I got to my 20th. One day, we got a chance to come to United States as a cultural exchange, and it was a pretty rare opportunity. We traveled for three, four weeks, had a great time when there was time to go back home. Friend of mine offered to stay a little bit longer and see a little bit more of America. So I decided that I stood a little bit longer and a little bit longer and a little bit long. I immigrated to United States. That happens. I mean, we all immigrants here. We came this generation or few generations before. Since I found myself in this wonderful country of opportunities, I thought, what should I do? <clears throat> I couldn't do anything else. I was a musician. This is what I spent most of my life with. And I put together a music group, music group called Moscow Nights. And this group within a couple of years became pretty popular. I mean, we climbed up to the top group to play that kind of music in the performing arts school. We would travel everywhere between New York City, Los Angeles, Hawaii, Alaska, Islands, Europe. We were good. And I think we were successful. You would say, how successful were you? How much money did you make? I would say it's all kind of comparing. At that time, performing every day, each of us per day, sometimes per hour, we made more money than most people in Russia made per month. So it's some way it's a kind of a sign of successful. So we perform in the Disney World, we perform in the Disneyland, we perform in the Dollywood, if you heard about that. We were greeted and invited to the private parties to the people like, oh, this is Dolly. She's a very nice person. And she actually has her own project with a, a program, a literacy project with Rory, if you know about that. One day as a group, we got invitation to do a program at the meeting. 
we didn't have any idea what kind of meeting that's going to be. We did so many of them. But friend of us said that will be a special meeting. The best people will be gathered there. Okay, so it's ended up, it was a rotary meeting. 1995, Denver, Colorado, six, 800 people. There were lots of representatives from Rotary Clubs from Russia and lots of representatives from Rotary Clubs through the United States who had connections with that part of the world. We were invited there to put the flavor of Russia to that meeting because there were so many Russians there. We did successful as usually. Then as it usually happened in Rotary, we were offered to stay there as guests. That's a normal thing at Rotary, right? If there's a speakers, if they're guests, just keep them and feel them welcome. So by sitting there and listening to the conversation, pretty much changed my life. I'm pretty sure that every one of you had your reason to join Rory. Maybe you joined Rory in the beginning when you heard about wonderful things that Rotary does around the world and you want to be a part of it. Maybe you joined Rory because you saw that the club is doing a great things for the local community in San Jose and you thought you want to volunteer, participate, you join Rory. Maybe you join Rory because you got a call from Brian or Jerry who would tell you, we have a great group. We meet once a week. It's a great company. You need to be a part of this group. And you join Rory. I don't know, but that was your reason. My reason was right there. I was listening conversation. People started to talk. One table will stand up and will say, ladies and gentlemen, our club traveled to Siberia, to Russia, to this town. We have friends, Rotarians there. So there are lots of sick people, lots of doctors, lots of facilities. Doctors cannot help their people. They're lacking medical equipment. Soviet Union is gone, new government is not there. Anything as Rotarians we can do to help those people in this difficult time. Another club stand up and say, we can do something. We've been there before. We have a local hospital, did renovation. We have the medical equipment sitting in the storage for $5 million and we'll be happy to donate it to this project. Another club stood up and said, if you do that, we'll travel there for our own expense and we'll help to set it up. And the problem will be how to deliver that heavy equipment and another club stood up and said, we have the connection with the Air Force. We fly to that part of the world. We have connections with Russia. Give us three, four weeks. Give us your equipment and consider it done. And speaker said, done. Let's move to the next topic. When I heard that, it put goosebumps on my skin because I immediately felt I'm in the company of great people here. People with the goodwill, success, and experience behind who people who gathered here not just entertain themselves and spare the time but looking for the problems can identify the problems and can successfully deliver help to so many people to me it was a sign i want to learn about organization i want to become a part of this organization and in the future if there is a chance if there is a chance i want to contribute by being a part of this organization at that time i lived in a place called boulder colorado maybe you heard about that town People called it a Republic of Boulder. I don't know what that means, but it was a pretty expensive place to live. And it was a fun place. I was a pretty known guy by playing accordion there the, uh, on the Pearl Street Mall. If you've ever been there, you would, you would know that. But <clears throat> my music business moved me from Boulder, Colorado to Cleveland, Ohio. And people, my friends, started to make fun of me. What happened in your life? You had to make that move from Boulder, Colorado to Cleveland, Ohio. I didn't understand humor then, later I did, but to me, to accordion player, that was pretty logical move because Cleveland is known for accordion and people, uh, Cleveland is very multicultural community who celebrate the culture pretty much from the middle of the spring to the middle of the fall. You can go every weekend to the different places and see how people and communities celebrate uh, Serbian festival, Ukrainian festival, Russian festival, Hungarian festival, etc. So it was pretty logical move. Uh, referred by the district governor from Colorado to another district governor in Ohio, I became a member of the Lakewood Rocky River Rotary Club on the west side of Cleveland. It was a pretty big club, around 130, 150 people will meet at the meeting. And uh, I became the youngest member of the club. I'm talking youngest. The person next to me by the age uh, uh, in the club could be my grandfather. But I knew. I'm in the right place with the right people. I want to be here. I can learn from these people. So to one of my sponsors was the gentleman. His name was Carl Johnson. He was the World War II veteran. He was one of those soldiers who in 1945 on the April 25th met with Russian soldiers on the Elba River. I did research and I found out that my grandfather was fighting on another side of that river at the same time against Nazis. It's just a coincidence. But 
so many years past in the 90s, veterans and Rotarians got found a way to get in touch with each other, started to communicate. And in the end, it worked out that our Rotarians went to Volgograd, former Stalingrad. And when they went there, they actually chartered a Rotary Club there. Volgograd Rotary Club that became pretty kind of uh, active Rotary Club. And when Rotarians from Volgograd started to come to United States and to Cleveland, by being a Russian background and speaking two languages, I became a host, driver, entrepreneur, translator, and everything else. And I was happy to be mayor of Volgograd was guest at my house. And when I saw that people who lived on the both sides of the Iron Cold War got together, they made this, such a great friendship and understanding between each other. You couldn't fool them anymore with the propaganda that fed to us for so many years. They broke all stereotypes. What media comes up right now with all the junk, you couldn't convince those people that they should be afraid of each other. They cannot be afraid. They cannot communicate. They're so different. It just didn't work. To me, it was a sign if this kind of exchanges and the connections can improve relationship between people in the countries, maybe we can find a way to multiply these experiences and create the system. I already had my agency and I uh, worked with the music business, book the groups and the companies across the borders. I had some experience with that. And I thought maybe this is why I can contribute. I proposed the idea to the club. Few respectful people supported me. Committee organized. We met a number of times. And in the end, on August 27, 2003, full of form 501c3 organization, Rotary Children's Fund was funded. And we started to build cultural bridges and manage cultural exchanges. I actually had a chance to travel and make a little speech in the presence of Rory president at that time. And that was me when I was young. Somehow, I feel he doesn't remember that meeting. To me, it was a very memorable event to meet with the president and have a little speech. That was an exciting thing for the young man. So we started to bring groups one way and another over the borders, create these cultural bridges without the people and organizations will step forward, will see what we're doing and start to support us. Didn't happen. We really had to work out the system, get in touch with the Rotary clubs, educational institutions, companies, create the opportunities for the groups to travel across the border, present the programs, uh, promote this idea and convince people and organizations this program is worthy to be supported. It makes difference. In the end, the main activity for our organization became this international cultural exchange program called Golden Gates. It's meant to give young people opportunity to be cultural ambassadors of their country, travel through the United States, learn about the United States and build cultural bridges one by one. We call this program Golden Gates. Strange name, isn't it? It's not because Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. No, no, no. Remember, I was living in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland doesn't have Golden Gate Bridge. Not because this structure behind me is located in downtown Ukraine. It's called Zalatei Varata, translate Golden Gates. It's 1,000 years old, very symbolic one. Not even that, but because one of the first groups who participated in the program was the group called Zalatei Varata, translated as Golden Gates. But what's really mean, gates to your heart, heart to heart, soul to soul connection. When you say your friend, you mean your friend. You trust your friend and you support your friend. For the people living outside of the United States, that means a lot because often people not just live but survive and have friend and depend on that is a very important thing. Is this fair to all concern? Who are concerned people, parties, organizations in this case? I guess participants is the first ones. Since 2003, we had over 40 groups from a couple dozen different countries. If they come to the United States, they travel from two to five weeks. They travel through the United States with between 15 to 25 states. They will present their programs to the organizations, companies, and the different institutions and reach up to 50,000 people per trip. It was easy to start uh, with the country of Russia because I was Russian, but uh, since the 2003, we reached over 1 million people in the countries like Russia, Ukraine, Armenia, Lithuania, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Georgia, and other countries. When young people put together the cultural program and will gather all information related to their country, visit with you, Rotarians, visit with the people, make friends and introduce and tell everything about their country, they break stereotypes. I mean, your stereotypes. How much, for example, you know about country of Georgia or Armenia 
before you meet with these young people who will show and tell you the best of their country. How much do you know about Kazakhstan? I'm from Kazakhstan, remember? If you didn't see movie Borat, you probably don't know anything about Kazakhstan. No, 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 I'm just trying to be funny. I tried to watch that movie a couple of times, couldn't finish it. And I can tell you nothing in that movie is about Kazakhstan except the name and the flag that they took. Actually, what happened after that movie when it came out, our organization was invited by the Minister of Culture of Kazakhstan. We flew there twice. We were offered the Young People's Group with a cultural program, and we brought them to United States, and we made tours around United States to tell this is what Kazakhstan is about. I mean, uh, they just didn't get uh, that humor from that movie. Uh, so when the groups travel, we make this uh, kind of tours and arrangements so they visit and see those places in the United States. They learn true thing about United States as well. They visit local museums, national museums, national parks, monuments. They meet with the people. They learn what the United States is about and the people because they break not only your stereotypes, they break their stereotypes as well. And their stereotypes came from Hollywood movies. We don't look much of a Hollywood movie things that comes out from there. So it's definitely a big opening for them. And most of the times they just fall in love with the United States. And when they do perform and present their programs, around 65% of all the programs that they present happen in the public schools, colleges, and universities. In each group, we work with them before they come. A couple months before we create study guide that thick, we send it to the schools, to the colleges. And the kids learn about this particular country for a couple months and everything related to that country. Then the group will come and as finally, they will put presentation, workshop, class visit, lecture, presentation, program, performance, etc. From the things that you heard so far, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Will this kind of program build a goodwill and better friendships? Difficult to imagine that it will not. It's a great tool, great tool. When young people come here and they represent and tell the truth about their country and proud of this, when they learn about United States and fall in love with the United States and find what the United States is really about, when they build these cultural bridges and friendship bridges, definitely it builds the goodwill and better friendships. But will it be beneficial to all concern? Concern, beneficial for these young people who participate in the program 16 to 21, and there were over 500 of them from different countries, without being in this program for the most of them, chance to come to United States is so small that they have better chance to become an astronauts in their own country and go to the moon than chance to come, apply for the American visa, pay the visa fee that will cost their parents often one month salary, get to the interview, get denial in 15 seconds without explaining why, and you never get your money back. You probably know about this situation with the visas in many different countries if you had a chance to work with the exchange students. But this is reality. But when they come, they see United States, they travel, they visit, they fall in love with the United States, it's definitely beneficial to them because it's a lifetime opportunity for them. Is this beneficial to our kids and grandkids in the schools? From the things that we hear from teachers and from parents, it's absolutely fantastic opportunity to get exposed to the world, how different and diverse is the world. Is the window to show that the world is much bigger than San Jose, than California, than even United States. They will grow. And this kind of exposure will make effect on their life. It's being proven. It's probably beneficial to the colleges and universities because they invite these groups all over when they travel and we make these arrangements and visit students during the lectures, presentations, and performances. General public, I guess it is important because they perform in this all this uh, festival cultural events through the country where from 300 to 10,000 people will be gathered to see their shows and get to know what they uh, are offering about their country. And different denominational churches, they always like to open the doors and show this country is built on a free faith, 
free country in God we trust. We want to learn where you guys came from and what's the situation in your country. And of course, the number one fans of this program are senior citizens because they appreciate the culture. They like the energy. They like the different costumes. And they remember how we live because quite a few years ago, it was much more popular traditional things. Every time when we travel, we line up, connect and line up to visit between 15 to 25 Rotary Clubs. We offer programs for the Rotary Club meetings, for the social events, for the fundraisers. We often connect with the Rotary support, with the public officials. We offer the program for the general community. We bring the people together, highlight this country and say, we're Rotarians, we're here. This is just one of the ways we improve the relationships and connect the world. And uh, in the big, big favor, we always try to line up performances in the places that Rotary Clubs often support and sponsor, like Boys and Girls Clubs, special schools, summer camps. It's pretty common practice. In performing everywhere, in performing our centers, in the Carnegie Hall, in the Kodak Theory, in Olympic Games Cultural Program, Disney World, supported by the uh, different officials, senators, congressmen, mayors of different cities, and often with the support of the Rory, we come to Washington, D.C., and we do the event in the Washington, D.C. Usually, embassy of that uh, country will support this event, will highlight this country, and media comes forward and say, this is the true cultural ambassadors of their country. And Rotary leads the way, managing this program. We get lots of publicity in newspapers, and the radios, and TVs, and the shows. Everywhere we'll put a Rotary Club sponsor this. Rotary Club supports this. Rotary leads the way in connecting the world. I think we're doing a pretty good deal of putting the good public image to the general public. And uh, how many of you had a chance to go to the Rotary conventions before? Excellent, Brian. You probably will be with me. When you go there, when you're in a crowd of 10, 15, 20,000 Rotarians at the convention, you can feel that buzz. The goodwill force, like in the Star Wars, is there. And by going conventions, especially there, you can feel and understand how much energy resources Rotary puts to bring young people into the organization, to let them know what the Rotary is about, let them understand and join us here. Remember that convention a couple of years ago in Toronto, Canada? There are 15,000 of us Rotarians at the closing and 1,000 Rotary actors will run along the aisles to the front stage. They'll make lots of crazy noise. And we're there, we see them. We hear them, we feel them, they're with us, they're part of us, they're our future. And we're proud to have young people with us believe in what we believe. Remember the convention in Hamburg, Germany? It was such a big thing. We had to do two openings and two closing because in the convention center, we couldn't feel all the Rotarians who came. Stage was size of the football field. And the young people one by one will walk on the stage with the flex of their country saying, this is our country. Rotary is there and we're proud to be a part of it. I think we're doing a pretty good deal contributing to connect with the young people. Over 500 young people from different countries, when they come here, when we do things together, when they visit with you, learn about Rory and what is this about, they go back, they're already part of us. They join Interact, Rotaract, they join Rory, they become Rotary Exchange students. And I'm not even talking about Interact and Rotary Clubs. Rotary clubs that we connect and work while traveling by connecting to the club, we connect with the Interact and Rotary and doing events together, doing the social events, doing something together. And uh, this club, uh, uh, people in the back of me, it's a group from Ukraine. Young people traveled for three, four weeks, couple times, went back, got in touch with the Rotary Club, with the district, and they chartered 50 people Rotary Club. And they already got some prizes for the projects done. It's happening with every country. Another good example, there was a girl, she was 17 years old. She came in, uh, went on a tour, got inspired by Rory, went back, graduated university, came back, got her master's degree here. She is here in NC State, uh, North Carolina. She is teaching in NC State. She's my neighbor, got married, bought house in my neighborhood, bigger house, and a couple months ago had her first baby. Make us feel proud. You probably have questioned how this kind of program works and how the dots were connected. Let's say this way, everybody who is involved in this program and coordinating and managing it, Rotarians, everybody volunteers. We worked out the system, then by traveling, performing with the groups, we convince people and organizations with the presentations and the performances, this program makes difference. 
and it's worthy to be supported. So we got some support from the different arts organizations, from the Rotary Clubs. We got support from the private foundations. We got some checks from the Rotary Foundations. We got some support from Walmart, who's sponsoring events all over the United States, Mercedes-Benz, and with the different universities through the United States. And in the future, when group comes to California, you probably see one of those. 15 passenger van with the 15 young people on site and everything that they need for presentation will be right there in that trailer. Costumes, personal belongings, music systems, uh, instruments, and uh, even sleeping bags, just in case they got stuck someplace. I'm sure that you already had chance to travel on the mission trips outside of the United States. I want to ask you to feel yourself in this situation just for the moment. Can you imagine you traveling on a mission trip overseas country that people don't speak English, different language, you're Rotarian, you're in charge of the group, there's a 15 young people 18 years old with you, you're driving to and pulling trailer behind the van, and uh, you're traveling someplace uh, through middle of Texas, and your van breaks on the side of the highway, everybody goes 80, 80 degrees outside, young people supporting you, but you know, they want to eat, they want to drink, they want to go to the bathroom and you're desperately trying to turn on the key and figure out what's wrong with this car. How do you feel in this kind of situation? Can you imagine just for a moment? Desperate, panic, fun, experience. I've been there a couple of times. This is how it worked out for me. Taking a rotary directory in the phone looking for the closest Rotary Club, making a call saying, Mr. President or Madam President, you don't have to do anything. But this is who we are. This is what we do. We, uh, we got stuck in this situation and we're very close to you. Any chance you can give us a hand? What would you expect from Rotarians? 30, 40 minutes. Few cars will rush in, will bring pizzas, will feed young people, take them, accommodate them, help us put us back on the road and the best friendships come up from this kind of stressful situations. We'll become a best friends, we'll visit with each other, we'll become a family friends. Every time when we start communicating, we'll start conversation. Do you remember that funny situation when you got stuck in the middle of nowhere and we had to rescue you? Oh no, that was not funny then. But after realizing how important to have the reliable vehicle for this kind of work for us, for Rotarians, travel with young people, a uh, few Rotary clubs thrown a few bucks in the bucket, few individuals said, you guys are doing the right thing. We would like to support you. And the Mercedes-Benz said, oh, with the vehicle, we can inspect, fix, and diagnose vehicle before each tour, and we will shine up the vehicle before each tour. And we got this. We got the 15 passenger 2020 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, zero miles, fully loaded, sitting in the driveway, waiting when pandemic will end. And we can continue travel and bring this group to California as well. And uh, when we travel, when we raise money uh, for the next group to have same kind of experience, when we come up with extra, we put it in the fund and we give it to other Rotary Clubs who are doing their projects with the children who cannot participate in this kind of programs. One of the clubs in Michigan bought the washing and drying machines for orphanages in Chile. Another club used our money and bought this uh, shoes for all kids in Bulgaria. Another club in Ukraine got our money, double it, triple it, and bought the, the medical equipment for the hospital in the Ukraine. We gave away over $100,000. For you, it maybe doesn't seem a lot. For us, it's a lot. And we made this money just by having fun by having this experience to giving young people learn about United States, learn about Rory, connecting the world. And we're very proud of what we've done. And uh, in the future, when a group comes to California, to San Jose, I would encourage you to think about that and maybe come and see one or another program that they do, working hard and to show your Rotarian support, or maybe even think to keep them for a day or two. So they have opportunity to bring it to your kids and get the, the grandkids to the schools, to the senior community, bring it to the general public and bring it out, highlight the country and say, this is just one of the ways we're connecting the world and improving the world. And if you think how we host them, they speak different languages. They're from different countries. Most of the times they speak two languages in the English as a second language. If somebody has problems, Miami University backs us up and the kids taking free courses at university before they come, so they feel comfortable But when they come and visit with you. And by concluding my presentation, ladies and gentlemen, I will say from my speech, if you got everything and you feel like, 
oh, this is just another traveling opportunity to have fun for the young people, explore the United States, and it's just a fun, fun, fun. You're probably wrong. Just think about that. How many performances you have to do for four or five weeks to reach 50,000 people? Did you ever try to travel in four or five weeks, 10,000 miles with this schedule? Traveling a couple hundred miles, performing, visiting with the people, seeing places, traveling, performing, visiting, traveling, sleeping in sleeping bags, traveling, performing, and things happen. Just a setting and unsetting sound system, it's a job on its own for so many times. But sometimes tire will blow off in the middle of the night and you're just sitting on the highway if you're dealing with this problem while well, are people waiting. Somebody breaks the leg and everything changes then. Sometimes somebody gets the flu and everybody gets the flu in a van. But nothing stops. The show must go on. Uh, they come as individual stars and they go back as a SWAT team, supporting each other and having a great time. When they go back, they go back that time. After seeing so much stuff, visiting so many people, performing, they sleep often, often with the time change for two weeks. And then for years, they will call and thank you, Rotarians, for the great experience that they got to learn about the United States, to represent their country, to build a bridge between their countries. And ladies and gentlemen, after being with this group so many times, I can say this program and this organization, if you get involved as a sponsor, supporter, host, is truly an opportunity for service above self. If you'd like to learn more about the program, there's a YouTube channel. I put some links in the chat box there. If you can copy and keep it to visit a little bit later, because when we finish program, it will disappear. That would be great. If you click the subscribe button, you will show your support to this program and these groups. And they usually put the videos of their experiences right there. There's a Facebook page. If you click like there, you will be notified about things that will be happening in the future. And if you like to learn more about organization, there's a website address called RCF, Rotary Children's Fund. Also, there is a button called donate or support. This is not fundraiser, no. But if you think about using that button, just keep in mind, we were inspired by it. We were put together by Rotarians. We run by us, by Rotarians. And with your help, Rotarians, we wouldn't be able to continue that kind of work. And I would like to finish with a funny note and a humorous note, my program today. Ladies and gentlemen, if you feel this kind of program is not worth it to be supported, you don't leave us any other choice but just go to Kawanas and ask for help. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. While young people in the background of me will tell you, Rotaeans, thank you for that great experience that they got to learn about the United States, to represent their country, to build another bridge between the United States and the world. I'll be happy to take any questions. The goal for the program is to have every group from every country around the world to come and visit with us here so we can teach them what is United States about and uh, build a bridge between our countries. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you. So, I mean, uh, Rebecca, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, sorry, I jumped on late, but what I did gather was this is quite phenomenal. So I look forward to seeing some of the YouTube links and uh, learning a little bit more. Great. How long has the program been going on? I didn't catch Since 2003. 2003. Do you have any follow up from some of the early kids? They must be. Uh, through any college and working or traveling? Yep, a few of them actually studying in the United States and universities. Some of them living here, some teaching here. Many of them became different professions in their own countries, but it's definitely, this kind of experience made a huge effect on their life, for sure. Good. I see a lot of smiles in the pictures. <laughs> So to uh, there's a, oh, a website is it that's RCF to follow up? It's a Rotary Children's Fund. Okay. I, I put the links in the chat so you can just click on the links and it will bring you there. I mean, we, we used to register in 2003 by Rotarians and I was not involved in the registration. 
as the Rotary Children's Fund, but lately it's got so much responses that in the Rotary itself, they got so many requests about the program, supporting the program and everything. So we, uh, to avoid the confusion, we had to remove the word Rory. Oh, okay. But, but, but it is a project that was in program that runs by Rotarians and everything involved. And we live by the Rotary rules to the four-way test. Has a group ever been in San Jose? In San Jose, uh, just traveled through, but they've been in California quite a few times. Last experience, last group was here in the February 2020. Mm-hmm. And actually one of the stops, Disney Performing Arts Center in Los Angeles was sponsored the group and they always line up the different schools to visit. The Escondido, big Rotary clubs uh, hosted the group. They sponsored the number of schools and brought to the number and the privileged schools to do the performances and presentations, visit the kids. It was great. Also, they arranged the performance in the Americans Performing Arts Center. And it was filled up. It was adjusted. With a, it's a performing arts center with balconies. It was filled up. They, they had a presentation and they had a standing ovation like for a minute. When everybody sat down, I came on the station and said, can we please identify Rotarians who is involved in this and responsible for this kind of program to come to Escondida. And Rotarian started to pop up in the applause. It was very proud moment. So what, what are you doing now um, with this COVID now? Are you stalling, doing, doing it through Zoom or something or? Uh, it doesn't work through the Zoom. We did create the virtual programs. We presented to the schools, some of the colleges and universities requesting that, but it's it's different. I mean, we just unfold right now. It looks like in the August, the organization started to plan some things. So it looks like if everything goes as planned and that is working as promised, we should be able to start to travel from the August huh. and have the group once more. And Next time when group will plan to come to California, you probably will get the email. Yeah. We'll say, Brian or Jerry, you got the email. Can you pass it to the members of the club? This group from this country coming to the area, do you want to do anything with them when they're in the area? And if you say yes, that's mean my presentation was successful. Then yeah. we'll probably visit your club meeting or have the meeting like this and see what we can do to contribute to the community, to the schools, to the senior community have the social event, get involved in Interact and Rotaract Club and, some of it, and have a great experience. If you like the presentation, I promise you, the experience when they come for a day or a few days to the area, that will be much greater. It's always very much fun. So do they usually come during the summer? Is that the, because they're out of school or is it a year long thing? So we, we used to have the four groups a year. So it's a summer break, winter break, and the fall and the, su- and the winter. But it looks like this is so worth a cost that we don't have any problems actually to give the students from the uh, process of studying, especially when they can do some uh, virtual stuff. So the plan is to have the one group in one part or another part of the United States every month. Okay. Two, two weeks or so. Yeah, we have, uh, we have chartered uh, five uh, interact clubs, in our, or four, I'm sorry, four interact clubs. That would be great. You know, if you come by and we could get them all together, that would be something that, that might, uh, you know, make a difference. It, it looks as if the kids are the age of seniors in high school or, or college freshmen, is that right? 16 to 21. 16 to 21. 16 to 21, thank you. And then one of the main requirements is when we put together the groups, we actually, they actually have to do something good in one or another uh, like a field of the arts to be able to put together the program that uh, will help us to put together the program that represent their culture. So it could be singing group, classical group, instrumental group, ballet dancers, circus. <laughs> It could be a chess player team. Doesn't matter if they're good in something, we help them to put together the presentation and we know how to put it together to present it. It always works good. Every time when they, each group will come in, the feedback always will be. It just gets every year better and better how far 
better you can go. Very good, thank you. Yeah, it was great. Any other questions, guys, ladies? <clears throat> okay, well, I tell you, thank you very much for your great presentation. Um, this is a first for us uh, to hear about this program. Um, I'm glad you came and um, you do have our emails and we're, you know, hopefully um, in the summer when you start again, that we might be able to work something out and have your group come and uh, do a present, uh, a performance to a group that we could, you know, bring together. That would be great. All right. Thank you. Thank so, you. Sometimes with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. What was that? Yeah, looking forward to visit sometimes with you in person. Yes. Yes, that would be great. Where are you located now? Right now in North Carolina. North Carolina. Very good. Um, so I wanted to um bring something up if that's okay, Rebecca. I want to, um, one thing is for our Valentine's, it's a night meeting at six o'clock. We will be um, meeting, I um, mean, doing it virtually. Uh, Terry and I have come up with several activities for us to play. So it should be a lot of fun. Uh, it starts at six. So, uh, you know, have a drink with you or something so we can have even more fun. <laughs> Um, the other cabinet will have more than one. Yeah, I know. Well, that's <laughs> if he, that's if he shows up. The yeah. other thing is, um, I uh, I now have the ability to see who reads and doesn't read the grapevine, and so I'm I'm going to give every after every meeting, I'm going to give a test to see who actually has read the grapevine. Now I know Jerry has. So I'm going to ask Jerry. Yeah. Just to make sure, not only did you read it, but did you actually comprehend it? So the first thing is, on the president's leaf, there was a, a photo, and there was kind of a theme that President Rebecca had, and it was called the month of, and can you fill that last word in? Who are you asking? You, Jerry. I can read it, L-O-V-E. <laughs> L O V E, is that what you said? L O V E. Yes. Okay, see, Rebecca, somebody read your your leaf there. Okay, the next question I have is there was uh I don't know if you guys were able to see this, but there was uh, one two truths and a lie from Rebecca. <laughs> and I wanted to know which who wasn't at the the last meeting. Right. <laughs> what was the the lie in Rebecca's two truths and a lie? Olson, were you there? Yeah. yeah. There. Let's see. But he still doesn't know though. He still doesn't know? Oh, that's right, because we didn't do it. So what was we it? We did, but he I mean he's there, but you don't you weren't like involved in the game. Right. So, Dave, who? What was the lie? As far as I, what's the, what, what? 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 What is it again? What are the right three? Now. Oh my God! Okay, here I'm gonna let me share the screen. Hmm. This is her favorite uh, Rotarian. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I guess and, I made that one a little too obvious. Hey, you guys, I'm so sorry. I have to go, okay? Okay, it's right here. I like this the difference between the free square and the bingo game. Oh, Can you read that, Olson? I don't see anything. I don't need it. You're not sharing, Brian. Oh. <laughs> Try again. Last for a second. Now, can you see it? There you go. Yeah. Okay, which one is a lie? Number two. Number two. 
<laughs> All right. And then uh, one more thing. There was a dispute on um, my, one of my truths. And um, people didn't believe that I was a rugby player. I wish Jesse was here, but she's not. But there I am playing in New Zealand, about ready to really smash that guy that's running with the ball. Yeah. That's a serious fro you had. That's, a, that's not you. Oh, wow. I know. Oh, where did it all go? No, and then here's no gray. I know it was a while ago. This is when uh, we're in a, what's called a line out. I was like the the second guy in. I was supposed to jump and catch the ball. But anyway, look at that sweaty mouthpiece, dirty. You know. Yeah. Well, now we know what really attracted Terry. <laughs> no, but you didn't have any mutton chops. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Is that a the scrum half or the, a wing running with a the ball there? Yeah, yeah. I think the, the thing, the thing, the problem with that whole game really was Bill Bynum because Bill Bynum's entire life is so crazy that any of it could be a lie or the truth. Ah, <laughs> oh, the two truths oh, that I know. All right, here's the question for you: Did I play rugby or not? <laughs> not. No. Uh, Wrong. I played in graduate school. See? Oh. See? <laughs> oh my god, what did you play? What did I play? Yeah, what position? I was largely scrum half. Scrum half, okay. That's like but, the quarterback. Sometimes we had a better scrum half. Mm -hmm. And uh I was 30 at that point, 29, I guess, at that point, and 30. And so some of the guys were faster. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> We used to watch a lot of rugby at Cal. They, they, were good, they were good teams, George. Yeah, they were like like number one in the U.S. We always lost to them. I remember watching like the team from Samoa and the team from France playing. Yeah. And it was like a bunch of refrigerators <laughs> all on one side of the field. Because <laughs> they were all just big, big, big guys. Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing with, with Samoans are the... Uh, uh, what is it called? The Pacific Islanders. Pacific Islanders. You don't hit them head on because if you hit them head on, you're going to get knocked out. You always got to hit them from the side because they're so big. And big. You just can't. Yeah, it's ankle tackling all the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you get ejected in college football now from doing that. Oh, yeah, I know. It's all. It's yeah. kind of scary to think. I, I used to have a friend who played at Long Beach State rugby and i think he had 30 concussions yeah oh really i might have had one <laughs> the other thing are the guys who who play in the scrum and have cauliflower ears oh yeah i know i know i know my ears got messed up all the time no i i was playing and um um this one guy i was just really kind of hitting him all the time like little sneak hits in the face and stuff and so i was at the bottom of the of a mall and he started hitting my head i mean he would just hit it 10 or 20 times and then they grabbed him off me and i think they threw him out of the game and the bad part was my dad was in the stands it was the first game he ever came to <laughs> and the last did you play one year over there or more um no it was just for uh three weeks it was a, a club tour. We did a, a tour. No, but you played. Oh, I played rugby for like off and on for like 20 years until I was about 48 when I my shoulder got separated. I go, okay, that's it. That explains it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know. It's that's great. Playing. That's great. Yeah, it's a tough sport. Yeah, it's a fun. It's a fun sport too. All right, you guys. We gotta go. So we'll, we'll see you next week. All right. And all this Everybody. information you gave me, I'm gonna put it on um, the grapevine. I copied it and put it on a document, so I have it. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Right. Thanks a lot. Great, great speaker. Thank you. Yeah, great speaker. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 -bye.